Well, the good news is the lines are still going in the right direction. They are slowing down a bit, but I guess that's to be expected when we start to approach MSRP. You might get an asymptotic like 100% uh, line there. Although at this point in a lot of GPU cycles, we would be seeing some models sold below MSRP. Anyway, what is this graph? I've been reporting on this for a while, but just in case you're not used to it, this is from 3D Center. So this is tracking uh, GPU prices, but this isn't just like a particular model. This is an average of the respective lowest prices. Oops, click that at major German retailers. So this is reflecting the German market. And this is set in relation to the US MSRP, uh, including exchange to Euro and 19% VAT. The green line being the average of the Nvidia prices, the red line being the average of the AMD prices. And then the uh, dashed kind of purpley line here is availability. We see availability continuing to go up and the yellow line being Ethereum value, since sometimes we've seen spikes in Ethereum value mean uh, miners buying cards. Now, um, overall, this is good to see it still coming down. And I would hopefully continue to see this go down. Although, you know, I did report that the light hash rate on crypto mining on certain NVIDIA cards has been unlocked. And an update to that is that it's also unlocked for Linux now on NB Miner or Nebu Miner, however you would pronounce that. Ah, I get myself out of the way. Ah. Anyway, um, so this is now unlocked on Linux. Now, it seems a little bit weird to me that two different mining <laughs> software teams have managed to crack the LHR at exactly the same time. Maybe they were working together or you know, somehow shared information, so maybe it's not weird. But if you're, again, more on the conspiracy mind of, you know, if uh, NVIDIA sees their, their value going down on their cards, but wants to keep it up, maybe adding in an extra, you know, 30, 40% to your, your uh, mining ability uh, is a good way to keep prices up. Now, people who argued about this in the comment section of my last video, I, I wasn't trying to say that I think that necessarily new card prices are gonna, gonna go up by the, the exact amount of the, um, you know, uh, hash rate increase. I think what this might do more is, is slow the decrease because if used mining GPUs started to get sold off, that puts pressure on the sale of new GPUs, which already has the availability going up, right? They don't want them to stick, sit on shelves forever. So if this would convince people who already have GPUs to hang on to their used mining GPUs, you don't have that used market pressure uh, the same way you would. So I don't know, guys, I, I don't think this is a good thing as far as keeping GPU prices going down because it, but you know, for those of you who mine on it, uh, I guess it is good news. <laughs> anyway, what else do I have for you today? When are the uh, when are the Intel GPUs? Where are the Intel GPUs? Why are the Intel GPUs not here? <laughs> well, uh, we're getting a little bit more information here. This is I found it at WCCF Tech, but it appears that they are getting their information from Igor's lab, or would it be Igor's lab? I don't know. But according to him, the, we could be seeing the delay till the um, end of quarter two. I mean, they're already scheduled for the end of quarter two, but they could be delayed, sorry, into late summer is the update because we were expecting them by the end of quarter two. But later summer could be more of the reality. And I believe he's claiming that that is due to the um, drivers. Let me double check here. Yeah, so according to WCCF Tech reporting on what <laughs> Igor said here, he reports that based on various sources, Intel might postpone the actual availability of its gaming graphics card lineup till late summer. This sets a time period of July 1st till August 31st. I don't know if that's maybe uh, WCF Tech just interpreting what late summer means. Anyway, uh, Igor also reports that AIBs are becoming quite frustrated with Intel's planning and don't know when the graphics cards are going to actually launch. So what this sounds like to me is that Igor probably has contacts who are at AIB partners who um, are expressing that it's delayed till late summer, they don't know exactly when they're coming out. That would be very frustrating for a business trying to plan these card launches and all of that. 
So yeah, that's kind of rough. And once again, he's saying the reason is cited as the drivers. So this is not at all good news for Team Blue or for anybody else who just wants this competition to get into the market. Ah, <sighs> anyway, but speaking of interesting new things getting into the market, we are seeing AMD Phoenix iGPUs. Now, these are targeting mobile. We've seen some information officially from AMD that they're coming soon, but we haven't seen performance targets. Well, if you believe this, this uh, Digimon here, it's going to be good. He's thinking 3060M 60 watt version good. Now, honestly, I kind of have my doubts about that. That seems almost too good to be true. But let's, let's think about why this could be really good and also why maybe this isn't quite as impressive as it might initially look. So first of all, you need to understand that the 3060M is not the desktop 3060. There's no way that this integrated uh, laptop chip <laughs> is going to be competing with the desktop 3060. Uh, next year. Like that's that's not happening. The 3060M, which is the mobile chip, which is weaker already, but then this is also the 60 watt variant. And considering these, I believe, go up over 100 watts on the more powerful models, um, this is not nearly as impressive as that would be. But honestly, this is still extremely impressive. And why could they make such a big jump going from their current integrated offerings? Well, uh, one thing is we are moving to DDR5, and since an integrated chip is going to be sharing its memory, right, with the system, the system moving to DDR5, I would imagine, would have a large increase to the performance. Like, that could be huge for an integrated chip sharing that memory. Also, you know, that's moving to the RDNA 3 architecture, which is bound to have some improvements as well. So I would expect some big improvements. Again, though, 3060M competitor, even on the low end model from an integrated chip. Well, if that does end up being true, that's awesome. <laughs> and, and I hope it is. That would be great. Now, we're seeing some leaks from Intel regarding mobile as well, but this is mobile CPUs. We're seeing Intel Alder Lake HX specifications, and it's looking like we're going to see up to 16 cores with overclocking and PCIe 5.0 support, and this is for very high-end laptops. Now, because these are based on the desktop chips, these would, I think, have fewer um, fewer g like integrated GPU cores in them compared to other uh, mobile chips, but I think these would be planned for laptops that would have discrete graphics added into them anyway. And they have this uh, leaked slide here if we wanted to uh, dig into there. Now, I'm honestly not super crazy into mobile, and this is just high-end mobile CPUs, but the fact that they could be going up to 16 core 24 thread uh, at the high end on mobile is, you know, some pretty impressive mobile performance here, I am very sure. Ah. Anyway, uh, last couple things. Uh, how about, um, you know, if you liked the Noctua 3070, how about a Noctua 3080 with its nice little brown fans? Apparently that's coming in here and video cards even nicely made this little slider where you can compare the 3080 with the 3070 backplate. It looks to be a very similar design. Now remember, this is a four slot card. <laughs> so anyway, I think this is just for uh, people looking for a very specific thing in their build. Anyway, uh, now we've got also some Ryzen Threadripper 7000 info. Now, I'm getting this from video cards, but I leave that, believe that they are getting it from Moore's Law is Dead. But the rumor here is that these Zen 4 Threadrippers could go up to 96 cores, which is just insane. But, you know, uh, who really needs that? Well, who needs it is people who need that many cores, and they'll be willing to pay the money for it. But when does it come out? We don't know. <laughs> as far as I can tell, there's not an exact release date on this, but there's already a lot of Zen 4 coming in soon. And we saw the uh, Zen 3 Threadrippers come in pretty late, so I would expect these to come in pretty late as well. And there's a Moore's Laws Dead video here you could check out, I'm sure, for more of the details. I've got to get to work, guys, so I hope all of you have an excellent day.